Gemini. Hello Cross Watchers. This is going to be a reading for June 1st to June 7, 2020. So my challenge for you for your birth chart for June is to find your south node, which would be K2. Last month I asked you to find your north node in your birth chart, which is Rahu, and the south node is K2. So hopefully you uh, screenshotted that or you have it printed it or something and you can go refer to it so figure out what house your south node is in and then google that to see the traits or that sort of thing the positive negative and I would read more than one page uh, or website possibly and then take the positives you can relate to and just leave what you don't relate to is what I would suggest so then journal that in your birth chart notebook or journal so also the June 5th is when the full moon is. That's going to be the strawberry moon. So I suggest that you um, get some dirt and put it on a plate or something and put your crystals on it and put them where the moonlight can hit them, either in a windowsill or a screen porch, and recharge your crystals. So I'm going to read the cards. You decide if they apply to you, <clears throat> Gemini. and. There's no way this can apply to every single Gemini out there. We all have masculine and feminine energy, so that does not apply per se. You can reverse that if you feel like it applies to you in that way. So here we go. I'm going to pull the Whispers of the Ocean Oracle cards first. The first one is 34, the gift of neutrality. Balance is at work in your life. Yin and Yang are opposites in energy, but reside side by side to create the gift of neutrality. So this is, this is the Nautilus, and I've read before in the book how the Nautilus can suspend itself so where it doesn't sink to the bottom of the ocean floor and it doesn't rise to the top of the ocean floor. It has the power somehow to balance itself, to defy gravity, and it also has the power to um, deflect negativity which is a very good skill so I feel like right now Gemini's a lot of you have the ability to deflect negativity coming at you this week what else was I going to say about this card I just forgot oh yin and yang so I feel like you're going to notice a lot of parallels in your life probably this week too a lot of things that would balance themselves out um, like a dark and a light side of situations and I don't know why but for some reason I do feel like you are going to be seeing that. So number three in the light of the moon a full moon can shine light on what you have been resisting this can be anything from your fears to your soul's beauty. So I mentioned the moon and this has the moon in it and it's the orca. So I feel like around the full moon something is going to come out or shift in you or something's going to come out and make itself known to you. There's something around the full moon that you have been resisting like the card says and around the full moon if you pay attention whether a dream or a thought in your head, a feeling, I don't know, something is going to shift where you're going to have a little more clarity on something that has been confusing you. So this is balance. You're balancing out. I see it in these two cards right here already, Gemini. Diving into new depths. There is a deeper meaning to what is happening. You might be looking at this from the surface and missing what is really going on. Take a moment to pause and breathe. Allow yourself to dive deeper into what it is you are feeling about your current situation. So... Diving to new depths tells me again that you have to go deep to figure out something. You have to go deep in your emotions, and I know it is not comfortable, Gemini, but that is the only way you are going to figure something out. So let me give you an analogy. Okay, I clean houses, so if there's a room that's really, really bad, I have to take everything out of that room for the customer and then clean the room and then put everything back in organized and let them go through what they don't want or what they do want. That's kind of the same thing you need to do with your emotions right now. You need to go in that room, you need to take everything and open it all up and figure and box it accordingly what you can handle. Okay, this was okay, I dealt with this okay last year. This year this was really hard for me. How can I give myself positive affirmations every morning to come around to this? and turn the negatives into positives. You have the power to do that. 
new depths. And I believe, let me see what whale that is, because I like to know that was the orca. So yeah, the Nautilus, the orca, and number two is, I think I know what it is, but I'm going to check. The sperm whale, that's what I thought it was. So they can dive deeper than all the whales. They have been recorded at depths greater than 3,200 meters and can remain underwater for a bit longer than an hour. They signify emotional depths. Between your thoughts and your emotional choices, you are being asked to dig a bit deeper into a situation. So yeah, that sucks. Like I said, it's not comfortable going in your emotions and dealing with something. But once you deal with it, it'll be behind you and you will not ever have to go back to it again more than likely. And if you do, it'll never be as hard as you're dealing with it right now. So I'm going to switch to the Mystical Cats Tarot deck. And you have Five of Earth. Five of Earth is you feeling left out. And everybody's getting this card. All the signs. It's really getting to people being sheltering in place. It really, really is. Two of C. So this is love. And I really don't know how that pertains to the lockdown because you're sad because you can't see your love, I feel. Nine of C is you dreaming about your future, which is very good. Hopefully you're manifesting while you're dreaming. Just put the positive thoughts out there. Um, so this has the flying fish in there, the cat toy, the feathers, the bowl of shrimp, the emotions are in check. So you are... I feel like you are manifesting and bringing like a magnet what you want to bring to you to you, Gemini. Five of Fire, I think you had this last time too. So in your household there must be people bickering and arguing. Lower energies just not getting along, basically. Oh my gosh, Ten of Fire, I think this came up after your last one in the last reading too. This is drama. You're removing yourself from a dramatic situation where you're like, what is going on with these people? Why are they going to act like that? So three of fire is you looking up to the universe saying, why is this happening to me? Why is this going on like this? This is not what I want my life to be like. And help me is what I feel you're saying to the universe, Gemini. So this is the Empress. We went right on to the Empress. So the universe is saying they're bringing you a new beginning, Gemini. A new beginning that is more nurturing to you, more, more nurturing and more um, motherly, I guess, or nurturing is what comes to mind. How can a situation be motherly? But nurturing, so I do feel like a new beginning. And look at this, the priest, this is beautiful. So Gemini, this says that you have the power right now to manifest what you want to bring into your life. The way the cat has the paw on the spear is like, I have control of my life. I have the power. Don't come near me unless you mean good. Also, the columns behind the cat to me represent the divine. The cat in the back represents the Egyptian cat Bast. Um, it could be ancestors and relatives, angels. A lot of divine around you, Gemini. So six of C's, you crying. There's a lot of crying around you. What's going on? Why are you crying? It's really, it's you're just having that hard of a time dealing with this lockdown. I feel. I mean, you have the neg the lower vibrations here, but it looks good. Love is around you. You're dreaming of what you want. You're manifesting, which is very, very good. That's what you need to be doing. A new start is coming to you that you are bringing to you. Whatever you have wanted, what you've manifest com is coming to you. The problem is when people don't realize, when you manifest, you can be indirect. When you're indirect, the universe doesn't know what to bring to you. So say you say, okay, I want a food job, a cooking job. If you don't be specific and say, I want to cook gourmet dinners of eight course meals, they're going to give you a job at a fast food restaurant or something, I assume. You have to be very direct with your manifestation. And you're manifesting good, so I don't understand why you're crying, but let's go on and see. So the hermit is representative of a Virgo placement in your birth chart or around you. If not, the Virgo represents clarity, that clarity is coming to you. Look at all the pomegranates of all the times in your life when you did make the right decision. And I don't know why you need to hear that. If you're doubting yourself that you make right decisions. The Emperor, this is beautiful. This could be an Aries around you or in your birth chart, but this is having a boss-like mentality. I'm the boss. I'm going to take ownership of my life. 
I'm going to do what I need to do. Look at these two kind of go together. A lot of people think the emperor is narcissistic. Sometimes people have to be narcissistic. There's no excuse to get through their life, which is sad because narcissistic people hurt a lot of other people, but I understand it. So to try not to be narcissistic. But these two cards are saying if you need to put that power in your head to make your life work and move forward, I would suggest you could put it in there temporarily. But don't don't stay in it too long and don't manipulate people for the wrong reasons if you're in that power. Just do it for yourself for the right reasons. To make yourself strong is what I would suggest. So then you have Six of Fire. Six of Fire is a couple things. This is somebody who takes. They're not a giver. They just take. Or it could mean you have a lead position in a job and people respect you. But still this person takes because when people give you things, you should turn around and look at them and acknowledge them and say thank you. So that's how this card kind of differs on what it says to me than what I feel I get from it. It's strange. I'm fighting it, I guess. So I'm going to switch to the Jark of Wisdom deck now, and you have Two of Wands, which is opportunity coming towards you, a couple opportunities. You may have to make a decision concerning yourself and somebody else, and you're worried that you won't make the correct decision and it may hurt somebody, and you need to not think like that, Gemini. Whatever decision you make is going to be the right one, okay? Four of Coins is you putting guards up around your heart. You're feeling vulnerable and you're protecting your heart. For some reason, you're putting a little blockage up around your heart. Like, nope, nope, nobody's coming in here. This is mine. Leave me alone. So I don't know why. Three of Wands, again, would be opportunities. I don't know if this is business opportunities, dating opportunities. There's something around you. So it's weird. You have two, four, three. And then you have Nine of Swords. This is somebody coming in to say something. They have, it's a throat chakra, and they're coming in. I feel very fast, very aggressive. It could be you or somebody around you is coming in to be aggressive and say something. Ten of Swords. There's going to be ending. I don't know if it's from this person making this saying coming in, but there's going to be an ending. Something's going to end. And it's not for your highest good when it ends, Gemini. I know it's hard, and a lot of people really have a difficult time with endings. Endings and for our highest good. We've learned our lesson. We've learned what we need to learn, and it's not going to benefit us anyway. So trust that the universe takes it out of your life. The Chariot. This is a new beginning. I feel like it's with a lot of passion. So you have the new beginning twice with the Empress and this. The Chariot. So think positive here. The Priest, True Love, Nine of Sea, Eight of Coins is you planning, organizing. I don't know if you're trying to pick the best job that pays the most and has the most benefits, I feel, for some of you. Ten of Wands. This is uh, opportunities coming towards you, happiness, but there's one thing holding you back. You have one little thing that you are either in denial of or you're looking at and you just need to deal with it and move forward. That's all you need to do. It's as simple as that. And you're holding yourself in that energy and you're just going to make it keep looping around and looping around if you don't change that energy and get out of that, whatever's holding you back. I feel like it has to do with something up here too that's holding you back. It's coming out here that it is blocking you. All these four coins. Ten of Swords, Ten of Wands, blocking you. And this one looks pretty good, and this looks really good. So the Hermit. Hermit came up twice in this reading for you, Gemini. That would be Virgo in your birth chart or around you, or Clarity. Getting an answer clear as day, not second-guessing yourself. Clear as day. Fast acts of communication. I feel like there's a lot of passion involved, too. You have a lot of passion in this reading. Fast action, communication, and passion. Another um, fast action. Ten of Cups. This is happiness. So I don't know if your happiness involves a Virgo or it involves clarity. New direction. The Emperor. The Emperor came up twice for you. So here it is. Boss-like mentality. A boss around you. I don't know if you can have a boss position somewhere that involves a Virgo. 
Very good. And it's a throat chakra, so it's going to be offered to you verbally, I feel. I feel like a new job. That is what I feel. So then you have King of Coins. So you went from the Emperor to King of Coins. So that's kind of strange. That's really strange. So this is somebody who is happy, who has a lot to offer, stable. He's, um, he's in charge of his emotions. He's just balanced. This King is balanced. So I don't know. The Emperor came out. So you got the Ten of Cups, the Emperor, and then the King of Coins. So I almost feel like somebody is, maybe somebody's messing around with, I shouldn't even use that word. Somebody may be involved with their boss. And they're married. But I don't see the three party card. I'm so confused. So yeah, I, I'm not sure. So let me go on one more and then I have to get over to the other cards. Nine of Wands. So there's something, you have a lot of opportunities, but there's one opportunity that is holding you back from taking any opportunity. So try and figure out what that is and deal with that and fix your, your not being able to move forward, Gemini. So i got to watch the time, so I'm going to switch to the Soul's Journey lesson cards for you. The first one is happiness. I'm aware that being happy means that I am on the right path. Beautiful healing love energy. So if you are in, in throat chakra, so you're communicating your love, which is half of being in love right there is communicating it. You can be in love all you want. If you don't communicate it, what good is it? I mean, that's so crazy. So many people are in love and never communicate it and wonder why it doesn't work. Another thing is, if you're not happy right now, then you're not where you're supposed to be right now. That's how we gauge how we're supposed to be. Happiness. And then the next one is grief. I understand that losing something is an opportunity to appreciate it. So Gemini, I feel like a lot of you have a hard time losing somebody. You do not like to let go of things. You like to hold everything around you. You wish you could keep every piece of energy that enters you in your life and never have to let go of that energy. I get it. I totally get it. But you know what? You have to let energy come and go and flow through you, around you. You cannot control the energy. You have to let it flow all around you. So be more accepting of the energy. The energy that is came and is not here anymore is still around you. It's in your soul, in your heart, so to speak. And then there's new energy flowing around you that you need to be aware of and accept and be open to if that makes sense to a lot of you i get that you're and look at this you're you're growing into the healing your sacral chakra is healing i feel oh or maybe that's your solar plexus chakra so let me switch to the angel and ancestor cards now so the first one for you is the high priest this is pretty powerful and you have the priest right here so this is kind of double confirmation to me, the columns I said are the divine. So let me look in this um, book. High Priest. This is a really good card. It takes me a minute. Sorry, there's a different like uh, categories in this book. So this says... Here we go. Recognize that you have the power to change your life, face your fear, and align with the light. In many traditions, the high priest is a physical embodiment of the divine masculine. He acts as a bridge between worlds and is able not only to divine the future, but to help create it too. He may be a leader in the spiritual tradition or in pagan traditions, be second to the high priestess, but he is always spiritually connected and disciplined. With great respect for his creator and his particular practice. In a reading, this card can represent a spiritual figure, leader, or teacher in your life or an aspect of your path that has led you to where you are today. You are a bridge between heaven and earth, and it's important for you to know that you are more powerful and connected than you may think. Everything you are giving attention and energy to at this time is creating your way forward. There have been some setbacks, but accept these are experiences that have led you into a deeper understanding of yourself and your spirit. Know that you are being guided by the ancestors to direct your thoughts and energies towards what you want to grow. 
heal and expand and then watch it happen right before your eyes. And that's beautiful. I mean, I see a lot in this card. The bird, the hawk being number one. So then one more is Direction Guardian, Choose Your Path. This is almost going to make me cry. I never knew what I'm going to talk about in this card till I got this deck of cards, and then I read it, and then I, I read more about it and more about it, and I became fascinated with what I'm about to talk about in this card. So just a minute, let me find it. And no, I don't think I've ever heard it before. And now since I've learned about it, I hear it a lot. I think I heard about it on ETV, I would say, about six months ago. Somebody talking about it. So this is the Direction Guardian. Choose your path. Connect with the deepest desires, then choose the path that will make your heart and soul sing. The Direction Guardian represents the angels of direction. These amazing, amazing angels are the ones who come into us when we are at a crossroads and don't know which way to go. When we are unsure of what is right for us or the bigger picture, they can help us know what is best for all involved. The Direction Guardian card refers to the vision of the Hebrew prophet Ezekiel, who is said to have seen an angel with four different faces. One was a child cherub, one was a bull, one was a lion, one was an eagle. These four faces show the angels can appear in many guides, guises and guide us in many different directions, but always for our highest good. Your path isn't set in stone and your angels and guides have no expectations for you, nor should you have any for yourself. There are many directions you can take. None of them are wrong as they all hold particular opportunities to grow and to learn. But life is to be enjoyed and savored. So if you know that there's a direction to be made and particularly if you are feeling indecisive choose the path you know is going to make you light up and choose with your heart so i'm talking about ezekiel i googled that and read about it, it was fascinating there's a few different stories out there definitely but that was interesting to me so i did that i'm going to pull the fortune cookie now for you gemini i hope this helps you a lot thank you for coming to my channel And your fortune cookie says, A flower can't blossom without sunshine. And the full moon is going to be the strawberry um, moon, which has flowers on it. I don't know why I connected those two, but I just felt like I needed to. So a flower cannot blossom without sunshine. So thank you so much, Gemini. Hang in there. Be strong. Bless you, Gemini.